K. Anusha Reddy, who is going to give her talk on male partner evaluation. Dr. K. Anusha Reddy has done her MBBS from Kamineni Institute of Medical Sciences and post-graduation from SVS Medical College and a fellowship uh, in gynec endoscopy from doc with Dr. Manjula Anagani. I, she has an IMA fellowship in infertility and master's in reproductive medicine at Homerton University, UK and uh, training in advanced infertility and she has worked as an assistant professor at a government hospital, Hannam Kunda. And as you can see, she's uh, also clinical head and fertility specialist, 49 at Warangal. So uh, please start your talk. Thank you, ma'am, for the kind introduction. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome all the delegates from different parts of the country on this pleasant Sunday morning. We promise to make your Sunday count. My topic for today is evaluation of male partner. Yes, he also is responsible. Male as a whole is involved in one third of the cases and he as a part of combined factor and unexplained infertility is involved in more than 50% of the cases. There is growing concern of raising male fertility issues all over the world. Many meta-analysis have reported that sperm concentrations declined by 50% over the past 40 years. Etiology can be pre-testicular, testicular or post-testicular. We can see that among all the etiological factors, idiopathic infertility is accounting for more than 30 to 50 percent of the cases. Do we really understand male infertility? Does routine semen analysis can differentiate a fertile man from infertile man? Do we need to do advanced sperm function tests for everyone? When to start evaluating a male in depth? What do guidelines say? What we know is just the tip of the iceberg and there is lot much we need to know about male infertility. Among different components of evaluation, history is really important and should be evaluated in depth. Men think that age is just a number, but when his age increases by more than 35-40, even though his counts are normal, there is increased DNA fragmentation which leads to decreased probability of conception, increased sperm chromosomal anomalies and adverse fetal outcomes. As the duration of infertility increases by more than 5 years, there is further decline of fertility by 30%. Sexual history is important. We should evaluate for ejaculatory or erectile dysfunctions. As the frequency of coitus decreases, their probability of conception decreases. Past medical history and associated drug history should be evaluated because most of these drugs are involved in erectile and ejaculatory dysfunctions causes raised DFI and abnormal sperm parameters. Lifestyle factors should be evaluated in depth. They should be repeatedly stressed upon because they are correctable. Alcohol should not be more than one to two units per day. Smoking or tobacco in any form, not only in smoking, uh, chewing or uh, pan, gutka should be complete no-no. BMI as it is increasing more than 30 percent there is further decline of fertility by 30 percent and when BMI is increasing more than 35 there is further decline by 50 percent. There are many studies which says that increasing stress, pollution, pesticides, excessive mobile phone usages, increased industrialization and increased exposure to endocrine disrupting agents are the leading cause for raising fertility issues in all over the world. Co-sibling history should be asked when one of the sibling is affected by any genetic anomalies or cryptorchidism. Physical examination should not be skipped. Uh, semen analysis should always be done in a standardized lab following WHO 2010 guidelines. Abnormal reports should be confirmed by at least two reports four weeks apart with three to seven days of abstinence. Semen collection may not be easy. There are many studies which say that semen collected in bathrooms or abnormal, uh, uncomfortable places causes, without a proper erosal, causes decreased sperm, abnormal, low, false, low sperm uh, volume and concentrations. So, uh, semen collection rooms should be provided with adequate ambience, privacy and facilities for washing. So, uh, those who are opting for home collections should be properly instructed to bring the sample as early as possible within 30 minutes and it should be maintained as close to body temperature as possible. Spillage should be asked for each and every one because initial few drops has maximum sperm concentrations. These are WHO 2010 reference uh, limits. Out of these, four are important. Volume of 1.5 uh, ml, concentration of 15 million per ml, progressive motility of 32% and morphology of 4%. These are low lower reference limits of normal just like pass mark in our exam. 
WHO 20, uh, 21 has come after 2010, but it is very much similar to 2010. Semen analysis has both macroscopic and microscopic evaluation. Whenever we see decreased, uh, delayed liquefaction and increased viscosity, always suspect infection. When the, in cases where low volume, very low sperm counts and low pH always suspect obstruction, either it can be genetical or uh, acquired due to infections. In cases of low volume and normal counts, suspect semen collection difficulties, spillage or partial retrograde ejaculation. In cases of low volume and partial low counts, uh, androgen deficiency can be there, there is a role of HCG injections. But please don't give testosterone injections. Testosterone injection has no role in male infertility. It causes complete testicular failure. Total motile sperm count is a better indicator than WHO classification system calculated by multiplying volume with concentration and motility. TMSC more than 5 is an indicator for IUI and less than 5 is an indicator for IVF XE. Isolated teratozoospermia should not be stressed upon. It is not an indication for TISA, it is not an indication for TISA or IVF fixie because we are just counting 100 sperms, not the entire sample. Role of pyospermia is controversial. We, uh, abnormal immature sperm cells just look like a, uh, puzzles. It should be differentiated with special stains and when confirmed, should be properly treated with antibiotics because puzzles causes increased DFI and causes uh, low success rates even in IVF and ICSI. Routine semen analysis should not be used as a sole criteria to include or exclude a male from further evaluation because it is subject to poorly standardized, not a powerful predictor of fertility and it doesn't give information regarding the functional ability of the sperm. When to do advanced sperm function tests in cases of recurrent IUI, IVF failure or recurrent miscarriages or any history suggestive of increased DNA fragmentation like, like in um, advanced age, infections, varicoceles, drugs, smoking, pollution or prolonged abstinence, this causes increased oxidative stress in the sperm which causes lipid peroxidation, sperm membrane damage, DNA damage, sperm damage leading to infertility. ROS has actually has a physiological role but when it is produced in excessive amounts where when the balance is lost it causes abnormal spermatogenesis leading to subfertility. DFI actually helps in decision making because when the DFI is uh, more, uh, even though the sperm counts are normal, IU has very low success rates. When the DFI is more than 30, ICSI does better results than IVF. But it should not be used as a routine because it lacks standardization, it lacks definitive treatment and oocytes can actually repair the damaged DNA. Ultrasound should be used in case of low volume, low pH sperm to rule out obstruction, but it should not be used in varicocele detection because grade 0 varicocele, which is subclinical, only detected in ultrasound, is not an indicator for treatment even in the presence of infertility. So, subclinical varicocele, even in the presence of infertility, is not going, we are not going to treat it. Only clinical varicocele, in the presence of infertility, correction is indicated because post-correction, many studies have shown that there is statistically significant increased success rates in IUI and even in IVF ICSI. Hormonal evaluation should be done in cases of azoospermia and severe oats less than 5 million per ml. It helps us in differentiating obstructive from non-obstructive azoospermia. In case of obstruction, everything is normal. In cases of hypohepo, all the hormones are abnormal. In case of testicular failure, FSH and LH is more and testosterone is less. T by E ratio is calculated, that is testosterone to estrogen ratio is calculated and when this ratio is less than 10, which is very commonly seen in obese men which ha who has a lot of estrogen in them, uh, letrozole is used in treatments in these cases. Role of testicular biopsy is minimal. Uh, uh, it should always be done in places where cryopreservation is there because first time gives the best result. Even if trial TISA is negative, the sample should be done, uh, should be sent for histopathological examination because depending upon the diagnosis, uh, and based on the chance of sperm retrieval in patients who are key, very keen on self sperm, they can be uh, given treatment for three more, uh, three more months of hormonal treatment and can be advised for micro TZ. Genetic testing is done in case of azoospermia and severe oligozoospermia because we have, it is seen that in 15% of patients with azoospermia and 5 to 10% of patients with severe oats has karyotype and Y chromosome microlilitions and when we 
we use these sperms in making embryos, they can transmit these anomalies to the offsprings. So, in the presence of these genetic defects, couple can opt for PGT-SR, get their embryos tested and transfer unaffected embryos. I would like to end my uh, talk with a controversial uh, topic, whether to treat the man or treat the sperm. Whether we take all the pain in treating the man by correcting lifestyle factors, giving him antioxidants, or sperm vi vitalizers, antibiotics or clomiphene in case of unexplained infertility, letrozole in case of obese man, or do microsurgical corrections if required, or just treat the sperm with max, microfluidics, MC, ICSI, PICSI. Many studies have shown that treating the man before treating the sperm causes, gives us increased success rates. Take home message is male infertility a growing concern, lifestyle factors should be repeatedly stressed upon, physical examination is a must, semen analysis only done in standardized lab and any abnormal report should be confirmed by two reports four weeks apart. TMSC is a better indicator of CVRT, isolated teratozoospermia not to be stressed upon, pyospermia should be treated appropriately after confirmation, imaging not as a replacement of clinical examination, subclinical varicocele not an indication for treatment, trial TISA should always be done in centers where cryopreservation is available, donor sperm should be the last last option. Thank you.